years. And we've all invested a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of heartache and a lot of sweat and a lot of tears. This is the most Democratic district in the country currently held by a Republican. And it's time to get the right candidate in, in this office in November to hold it again in 2018. I bring to you a background in business and in law. My economics degree is from Stanford. My MBA is from Northwestern. My law degree is from the University of Chicago. And I've worked hard in those industries, but more importantly, for decades, I've been working on behalf of access to health care and choice and the environment and education, the values and the issues that really matter to all of us. Um, I have been in elected office now for seven years. I'm in my seventh year of holding uh, elected office in Highland Park. I was in the city council for two years and have now been the mayor. I'm in my second term, my fifth year. And I was asked in 2011 to run for this seat. And I had just become mayor of Highland Park and I felt that I owed it to the people who had just elected me to office to be in that office. Um, during those seven years, I've had the chance to know and to learn and to show what public service is. As a mayor, I've balanced $85 million budgets every single year and I've maintained a AAA bond rating every single year. That's something only a handful of cities can claim. But I've also made human services a priority. I created a legal aid clinic to help our immigrant population on their path to citizenship, to help victims of domestic abuse have access to justice, and to help people deal with rotten landlords. And I've shined a spotlight on hunger. Uh, we know that in our district, there are a number of issues and a number of opportunities. And we have lacked in leadership for many, many years. I've had the opportunity as a mayor to get to know and to work with my fellow mayors, uh, business leaders, community leaders, and have taken fights for the region uh, to the match. We had all kinds of problems in 2011 with ComEd. Daniel Biss, you and I, and Elaine spent many hours holding ComEd accountable and making sure that millions of dollars were invested in infrastructure and those power outages have been reduced. And more recently, when the state of Illinois gave us the opportunity to ban assault weapons, we took the courageous step. I have Council Member Alyssa Noble with me here today. And we voted to say no more to assault weapons and large capacity magazines in Highland Park. And we ended up taking that fight all the way to the Supreme Court, the United States Supreme Court. That's something that I will do as a member of Congress. I bring the passion, the energy, the team to not only win this seat, but to serve our public, to do a good enough job to hold this seat in 2018. I'm proud to tell you, I have the endorsement of U.S. Senator Dick Durbin, Abner Mikva, Adlai and Nancy Stevenson, Dan Seals, Julie Hamas, David Hoffman, Robin Gable, Karen May, Deborah Shore, Barbara Flynn Curry, Ann Massey, mayors, trustees, all kinds of people across the district, and I'm proud to ask today for Northfield Township's Democratic endorsement. I'm Nancy Rotary. I'm running for U.S. Congress. I'd love your support. Thank you. every time I've been the underdog and every time I've won. Uh, I think I can win because I have the support of people who are respected, people who are leaders, people who are the epitome of public service. I uh, work hard and I don't ever give up. And that's the kind of fight that wins against the NRA. That's the kind of fight that wins against ComEd. And that's the kind of fight that's going to win in this district. Well, wait till next week. Let's work with what we have. We have done an unbelievable job of getting over 18 million people uh, the health care insurance that they need. Uh, we know with the single-payer system there are a lot of challenges. We're trying to get a lot of the states on board. There are a lot of kinks that need to be worked out. Uh, but at this point, I think we need to work with what we have, obviously. Uh, giving people the opportunity to buy into something like Medicare uh, might cover uh, the rest of the people who are sort of falling through the cracks. But at this point, I think we need to use what we have, use the process that we have, make sure that it's moving forward, and then we can talk about moving to a different system. But at this point, 
it's a tremendous success if you can bring on 18 million people who previously didn't have access to health care. Yep. Um, Nancy, um, Mark, um, to Brad, um, made a campaign contribution to Mark Kirk before. And he um, stated that he would have opposed um, the president's deal with Iran. Can you tell me whether you've ever made a campaign contribution to Mark Kirk? <laughs> I've never made a campaign contribution to Mark Kirk or any Republican. Um, I, I think I'd break out in a rash. But in any case, um, and your question was? Would you have supported or opposed the president's deal with Iran? Oh, I issued a statement early on uh, that basically said I did support uh, the Iran agreement. To me, there were two options. There was the Iran agreement and there was no agreement. There were a lot of conversations about alternative agreements. I had the opportunity to talk to members of Congress, uh, members of the Senate, who assured me there was no returning to the table to renegotiate a better deal. So by offering that as an option really was irresponsible. It was giving people the thought that there was something that could be achieved that wasn't being achieved for some reason. So I did come out in support of the Iran deal. To me, it always makes sense to try diplomacy first and then you go to the unfortunate other option. But uh, the most interesting part of that was the people I heard from first were veterans who said thank you. You know, they say all politics are local, and that's a prime example. And so when I became mayor, uh, one of the first priorities I established was investment in infrastructure, because we know the strong impacts that those investments have, not only on creating jobs and improving quality of life, but public health and safety. And that's what we're tasked for. If you think about government, that really is the reason why we have government, first and foremost, is to take care of people in those ways. So we actually, in Highland Park, invested over $35 million in our water treatment plant. We provide water not only for Highland Park residents, but for six other communities. Uh, we've put a lot of time and effort into those uh, areas because it makes a difference and it has to be a priority. It's not sexy, but it's something that we absolutely are tasked with. Um, and I saw that there was a news article about the public schools of Detroit and, and the lack of floors and the water coming through the ceilings and so forth. Um, it's incumbent upon us to provide those foundations for our residents. We absolutely have to prioritize education and making sure that kids are in safe, healthy facilities. If you think about the environmental risks to kids um, who are put in these positions, first of all, they're smaller, their body mass is smaller, so whatever toxins they're getting are even more impactful on them. And they don't have a voice. It's, a, it's our job to be the advocate for those who don't have a voice and to take care of them. So absolutely shameful. Important to know, when you elect somebody who's been a mayor, you're electing somebody who has been 24 hours a day, seven days a week accountable to the residents. I know what that means. I know what that looks like. I know how to do that well, and that's why I'm running for Congress. And a better chance to just win Let's look at the data. The uh, district has been drawn. What was the oh, I'm sorry. The question was, we don't like Bob Dole. Why are you better than Brad, basically? Was that pretty much it? Why is it you can have a better chance to win? Why do I have a better chance to win? And basically, we're tired of the flip-flopping of this seat. Um, the district has been drawn to be won by a Democrat with an 8% margin. When Brad won in 2012, he won with a 1% margin. When he lost in 2014, he lost by about a 3.5% margin. That candidate is underperforming for that district. I bring experience in public service. I bring a different point of view. I have to tell you the Republicans that I've talked to are dying to run against Brad Schneider because they know how to beat him. They're scared to death of running against me. And they've been on my tail for about the entire time that I've been in this race. Trackers, people throwing harassing things all over the place in terms of the internet and so on. They're very concerned about running against me. I can't wait to run against Bob Dole. I can't wait to debate Bob Dole. I've been watching him as a mayor. 
you know, he has round tables of mayors and I sit there with all the Republican mayors and take copious notes because I know how he is as an official and I've watched him now as a candidate a couple of times. I can't wait to get my hands on that guy. I know it's going to be a great time debating him. Look, he calls himself a moderate. His votes are 87% of the time with the Republican Party. It's a matter of just educating the electorate and saying, really, this is the guy who represents you? This is the guy who doesn't live in our district? This is the guy who says he's pro-choice and then votes against choice? This is the guy who is trying to vote every single opportunity he has to repeal health care. He's got to go. He's not representative of the 10th, and he doesn't live in the 10th, and it's time to send him home. Happy to answer questions afterwards, but I'm apparently being told my time's up. So thank you so much for your time this morning. Appreciate it, and hope I can get you some questions.